Hello everyone, I am Rod and I am the Game Design Instructor for the Academy of Entertainment Arts over at Dixie Hollins High School. If you are one of my students, it's Mr. Flowers to you, and welcome to this video tutorial. Alright, welcome back. In the previous tutorial we went over making uh, the the sprite list for our inventory system and some items that we can use. Now I did not make any extra items for our potion or the key just because most of the time you're not going to need a specific item for that since it's not animated. It'll just appear and then disappear when you use it. Whereas uh, anything you're going to actually handle and use in game I would definitely make something for those. Okay so now we need an object for these. So I'm going to go down to my objects here and I'm going to create a new object. This is going to be obj underscore weapon. And this is going to be the weapon object for our sword, bow, and uh, the arrow. And then I'll create my next item, which is going to be the, uh, or sorry, next object, which is going to be object item pickup. So whenever you pick up an item, uh, this is what this list will be applied to. And then, our, of course, our weapon will change if it's, an, if it's a weapon and so on. For now, I'm going to go ahead and give these both a default sprite, just so it has one. So item pickup is going to get our uh, item list here. And then our weapon item will get whatever weapon you want them to start off with. So in this case, I'm going to do the sword. And then I'm going to go into my object game here. In the create event, I'm going to make a new spot. I'm going to call this uh, Inventory Setup. Now you can make an object for this, but since uh, a lot of the student versions or the uh, free version of GameMaker 2 has a limit to the number of uh, objects you have, uh, it's actually limited to 15. And if you look at what we have here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 already used, right? So to not make another object, we're going to reuse a couple. So in our inventory setup, the first thing we're going to want is an enumerator. And all an enumerator is is a uh, list of items. It's kind of like an array. And so to write an enumerator, we do enum. Sorry. Do enum. And then we give the enumerator name. This is going to be item list. You see that will turn red. And then inside of here, you're going to give it some braces. So an open brace. Actually, I'll do it down here so it's easier to see. Open brace, close brace. And then in here is going to be a list of all of your items. But you want to put this list in the same order as it comes in your item list uh, here. So our potion is the first one, second, third, fourth, fifth, so on. So you want to make sure they're in the same order because we're going to use the indexes of these to correspond with the... Uh, list of our enumerator. And these are all numbered from 0 and up. So the first one is going to be in position 0 and we're going to call this one empty. And then we're going to separate this by a comma. The next item is going to be in our list here. So if you look at our list, uh, item 1, so one, items 1 and 5, so 1 is the potion, then I have 2 is my key, and then my sword. Let's go ahead and do those. Make sure you're putting these in the order that you created yours in. So the next one is my potion. And then I have my key. And then the sword. And then I have the bow and the arrow. Now the last object or the last item in your list does not get a comma. Okay. Every entry has a comma except for the last one. If you add one here, GameMaker is expecting you to create a new entry, and when you go to run it, you'll actually end up get a an error or a bug or something. So, since there's no entry after arrow, we will not add a comma. So this tells GameMaker to stop here. And then lastly, uh, for the enumerator, the order of everything again is very specific. So this is position zero. This is position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? Now, if you look at your item list sprite, 
It is listed 1 through 5, but GameMaker stores this in an array. And the first instance, so this is instance or index 1, but this is actually index 0. So if we were to call our enumerator, it would actually get the value of our, where did I put the thing? It would actually get the value of empty, because empty is in position 0. But our position 0 is actually the potion. So what we're going to do is we're going to augment this. We're going to set this one. We're going to set it to a value, and then this will be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So for this one, I'm going to do equal to, and let's say minus 1. And this will be set to some value, and then they, these will be updated to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The next thing we want to do is set up the, the size of our inventory. So let's go ahead and create some variables here. I'm going to call this uh, num underscore uh, slots x. So this is the number of our inventory slots in the x. And for now, I'm just going to give that a value of 10. And then I'm going to do the number of our slots in the y. And I'll do a value of I'll do a value of 5. You can make these anything you want. Just be aware of how big it's going to be on the screen. Now I need an inventory position, so I'm going to do my INV for inventory position, X. I'm going to set this to 0, inventory position Y. I'm going to do that as 0 as well. And now I want the size of my inventory. So I'm going to do inventory size. And that's going to be our number of slots in the X multiplied by the number of slots in the Y. So num slots X times num slots Y. Now that we have the size of our inventory set up, we're going to actually set up the inventory itself. So we're going to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and comment these. So this is inventory setup. I'll do this as size of inventory. And then this is the uh, inventory array. So as I mentioned in a previous video, the inventory is going to be stored in an array. So if you remember the video, the previous one, uh, we talked about arrays. Uh, setting up an array in GameMaker, you're going to want to use a loop. So we're going to start out with our for loop, so for, and then our volatile variable. And the first part of the inventory is the number of boxes that go on the x-axis, so from left to right. So I'm going to do uh, var, I'm going to do ix for the number of boxes in the x, so inventory x, and that's going to be set to 0, and then we're going to make sure that ix is never greater than the size of our inventory. So ix is less than number of slots in the x, and then ix plus plus. So that's the first part of our array set up. But now I need the number of slots in the Y. So another loop. So for var IY is set to 0. IY is less than the number of slots in the Y. And then IY plus plus. I can type. And now we're going to create our inventory variable. For this, I'm going to use a global. So I'm going to say global.inventory. And then we use square brackets. That's how we identify if it is an array. And then inside my square brackets, I'm going to place my ix and my iy separated by a comma. This is going to create a multi-dimensional array. In the previous tutorial, we went with uh, single-dimensional arrays, which only had like one value in here. But now we're going to have two values, so ix, comma, iy. And that's going to be set to item list dot empty. So every single one of our inventory slots will be this empty slot. Okay, with that set, let's go ahead and take a look at our step event. All right, so inside of our step event here, we have the end game. And if you remember from the previous video, we have our transition for our rooms here. 
and we want to set up a new state for the inventory. You can put this anywhere you like. I'm going to do this at the end of my list here. So I'm going to come down to this brace after uh, room transition exit. I'm going to call this case uh, in inventory. Go ahead and add a break. And all I want to do here is I want to have, uh, for the moment, just some controls that turn the inventory on and off. So I'm going to do um, exit inventory. And so I'm going to say if keyboard check. And then ORD. I'm going to use the I key for inventory. So if we hit the I key and we're currently in the inventory, it should send us back to um, the end game state. So state will be set to uh, in game. What's nice about this is it'll also pause the game for us because once we're in the inventory, anything that's governed by this in-game event uh, or in-game case will not run until it's back there. So we'll have that, and then inside of our in-game, since there's nothing here yet, I'm going to go ahead and put a spot that says uh, enter inventory. And I'm going to say if keyboard check ORD. I'm going to use the I key again. I'm going to say state is in inventory. And that'll probably work. Uh, let's actually change this to a key pressed event. That way it only toggles once. So I'm going to go ahead and underscore and do pressed. Because we don't want to have a situation where it just glitches us between the two states. So I'll go ahead back down to this one. I'll do key pressed. Okay, so that's all those do. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the, the draw event here. And I have, of course, my states set up in here as well. Do I have an end of the GUI? No. So I have my end game, and then I have my other stuff. And inside of here, I'm going to draw the inventory when we are in the inventory. So I'm going to create a new case. This is going to be in inventory. Now, I will need a few variables, but uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them just yet. So I'm going to call this uh, inventory position offset. I'm going to say offset x. Currently, I'm going to put it to 0. Offset y, that'll also be 0. I don't know what my values are going to be yet, but I know I'm going to need these later. And I'm going to set the inventory, so uh, draw inventory. So to draw the inventory, we need to uh, create the two different loops that we need for the boxes left and right and up and down. So let's do that. So for var ix is equal to 0, ix is less than the number of slots in the x, ix plus plus. I'm going to go ahead and copy this piece. If you're going to copy and paste, just be very careful of the ix's because you don't want to draw to the wrong value. So make sure that these are iy's. And that we are in the number of slots to the y. Alright, now that we have our loops in, we can go ahead and start writing the uh, boundaries for our Inventory. You can do this a couple different ways. You can create a sprite for the border, or you can draw the border using the draw rectangle function. Since we're limited on sprites in the uh, student version of this, or the free version, uh, I'm just going to do it through a uh, rectangle. So what we need for a uh, rectangle, if you do a draw underscore rectangle, if you hover on this thing, you can see down here the rectangle requires 
a few pieces, uh, x1, y1, x2, y2. So it needs a starting location for the first part of the rectangle, usually, um, you know, at position 0, like up here or whatever. So it needs a starting position in the x, and then it needs an ending position in the x. Then it needs a starting position on the y, and an ending position on the y. That way it can, it's kind of like connecting the dots. It needs point-to-point positioning. We can write these in directly. We can just write numbers in here like um, 0, 0, and then 10, and 10. And this will draw a border. And if I actually if I run this, uh, we need to tell it if it's an outline or not. I'm going to say true for an outline. We can run this, and we'll see whenever we hit the inventory button, we'll see our little rectangle up in the top corner of our game. So like up here, if I hit the button, you can see a little rectangle, or square in this case, up here. That's like 10 pixels by 10 pixels in the corner. But we don't want just one. We want one box for every inventory slot. So we're going to do a little bit of math here. And to save on space, because this function can get really long, we're going to create these variables uh, right here in our loop. So I'm going to do a uh, temporary variable. So I'm going to do var x1. And that's going to be equal to the uh, position of our inventory. So if you look back at our create event, our inventory position is at 0 and 0. So we're going to say inventory position x. And we're going to, we're going to add to that um, the integer that is inside of our ix little variable here. So we're going to say ix plus the size of each inventory box. Uh, right now we did it as 32 pixels, but I, I don't want to leave it as a hard code because this right here will... Uh, what if we wanted to change it? Then we'd have to change this number again and again. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do... Um, I'm going to make these volatile. I'll do var. I'm going to make this uh, slot size. Slot size. So slot size x. And then var uh, y1 is equal to inventory position y plus i x or i y. Oh, and this should be times slot size times slot size y. Now the reason why I'm doing this um, size x and y is you can give these different values and you can create a, like a rectangle or whatever. So for right here, just for the moment, I'm going to do uh, slot size x. I'll set that to uh, 32. Slot size y, 32. Ideally, you'd want these to be in your create event, but they'll work here for now. We'll just move them. And you can see when we write this how it's going to work. The next part is going to be uh, var, so x2. So this is our second group. So this is the starting position of the x, starting position of the y. This is the ending position of the x. So we're going to look at our inventory's position x again. Plus, now we're going to do something a little bit different. And it's easier to understand if you look at it inside of a, uh, a Word document, but I'll show you in here. So we'll have open parentheses. So if you remember like uh, basic algebra order of operations, when it runs this math, it's going to do what's inside the parentheses before adding or multiplying or subtract or anything like that. So we're going to add 1 plus ix times slot size x. And then var y2 is going to be inventory position y plus, open parenthesis, 1 plus iy times slot size y. Now what this will do, and I'll open up a Word document so you can see, or a notepad will work. 
So where can I put this? I'll just copy. All right, so the way this is going to work, if we plug in some values here. So we know that our inventory position X is currently um, 0 plus the first value of IX, which right now starts at 0, plus, or in this case, times our slot size. Our slot size in this case is 32. We'll just set that over here and we'll get our first value in the X. We'll do, so that'll be 0 plus 0 times 32 is 0. So that's the first position. The second position is the Y position, so 0 plus 0 times 32 is going to be 0, so that's going to go here in position 2. Our uh, X2 position, this is our uh, third position, we're going to have 0 plus, open parenthesis, and then the reason we're doing this little bit of math is 0 plus 0 is 0 times 32, right? That gives us a 0 position and a 0 position. But we can't have another 0 position because those two X values will write on top of each other. They'll draw in the same spot. So we need the starting position and an ending position. Since our box is 32 pixels uh, wide in this case, we want the next position to be 32 pixels over. But we want it to do that for every instance of IX or every instance of IY, for every slot of our inventory. The first slot is 0, the second slot is 1, right? So in this case, we're going to offset it. We're going to say 1 plus the first position of uh, IX is actually 0 times 32. And that'll give us a value of 32 at the end. And if we do this again for the next value in our line, it'll give us 32. So then when it runs through the loop a second time, so that's the first time it runs through the loop. Let's say it goes through a second time. So I'm going to go up a little bit. Doot, 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 doot. So the second time it runs through, uh, the position of our inventory hasn't changed any. But we're going to add that to our x1, which will now be 1. So 1 times 32. That gives us our first slot, which is 32 pixels over. And that's going to happen again for our y. So plus 1 times 32 will give us 32 in the y. Next one down, 0 plus, open parenthesis, 1 plus 1, because now our x value is now 1. So that gives us 2 times 32. And that gives us our next value of 64. And so on. So this will happen again for the next value. Let's go ahead and copy that. And then 64. So every time it steps through the loop, we're going to add 1, and we're going to add this one to offset the end of our position, right? And it'll just keep going like that, and it'll give us a box next to each other over and over and over again. Now we can see that in real time here. If I plug in my values for x1, whoops, x1, y1, x2, y2, and if I go ahead and run this, and I hit my button for inventory, you can see them appear there, and there's my slots. You can see how the game kind of freezes, I can't move or anything. Because once we're in the inventory state, you can actually see the state is in inventory. Once we're in here, everything's paused until we exit, and everything goes back to normal. So there's our inventory array being drawn to the screen there. So every one of these, this is position 0, and then 32 pixels over is this one, 32, and then 64, and then 96, and so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and put these in the correct place. I'm going to have my um, 
slots X and Y here. I'm going to do, I'll just set these up as temps. So I'll do var and var because we don't need them all the time. And then down here, I'm going to do this part. This is going to be draw inventory uh, border. Or you can say slots if that helps your brain, slots. And the next part is going to be drawing the items in the inventory. So we'll say draw inventory items. Now this one we're going to use a draw sprite. So we're going to say draw sprite. And we have our sprite index, the sub image, and then the x and y position. So the sprite is going to be our sprite list. So sprite item list. The sub image, now this is going to be the, uh, the fun one. This is going to be our inventory array. So if we come back up to our create event here, we have our global dot inventory. And then inside we have the x and y. Um, coordinates and then set to whatever is inside the inventory. So that's what we're going to put here. We're going to say global dot inventory open brace ix iy. So when it runs this piece of code, it's going to look inside of this array and it's going to see what is in the position of ix iy. So if this is 0, 0, it's going to find whatever's in the first slot. If it's 0, 1, it'll find whatever's in the next slot down. And if it's 1, 0, then the next slot over, and so on. And the next part here, this is going to be our x and y position. So we want our inventory position x plus our ix value. So that's each slot there. And then multiply by the slot size x. And then we have our inventory position y plus each slot in the i or in the y and then the uh, multiply that by our slot size y and if we go ahead and run that we should see something in each inventory slot and we do so right now we have a bunch of Items actually have every item uh, flickering randomly, but we'll fix that. So we're going to do two things. First, we're going to tell it to stop flickering. To do that, we'll go to the create event here. And since our uh, our game object is not using any sprites, we can just in here somewhere just tell it uh, image speed is zero and it won't cycle through the sprites anymore. So there they are. No more flickering. And now we'll fix the other problem, which is right now, if you look at our inventory array, um, our global inventory variable is set to itemList.empty. So Really, our inventory should not show any items in it. So we'll fix that. Let me go ahead and give this a little title. We'll just say um, stop uh, running frames. I'll go back to my draw event here. And then where it says draw inventory items, I'm going to put a condition here to where it will only draw an item if an item is actually there. So if global dot inventory ix iy so if our inventory slots are not empty so not equal to item list dot empty so if our inventory slot is not an empty slot we will draw the item that's there so if we run it now we should not see anything in the inventory and they're all empty if I go to my create event here, I change this to one of these. I'll pick arrow. And I run it. We should see the inventory filled with all arrows. And I do. 
Okay. But what if you didn't want all these to be the arrow, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put these back to empty. What if you wanted just one slot to be a certain thing? Well, I'll come outside of my array here, and I'll just say global dot uh, inventory. And I will just put the, no the number in there, so 0, 3, 0, 4. Sure, that'll work. So the inventory position, and then I'll give it item list dot sword. I'll pick a different position. Global dot inventory. I'll do two and one. And I'll give that item list dot potion. We should be able to see these in our inventory. There we go. You can see that in this slot, I got the potion, and that one I got the sword. All right, so that'll do it for this particular tutorial. In the next one, we're going to look at uh, moving the inventory into a nicer spot and actually be able to pick items up and drop them. Okay, go ahead and save your work, and I will see you guys in the next video.